Hi there, this is Eshu. I'm the abbot here at Zen West Buddhist Society. This Living Zen podcast is just one of the many resources we've created at Zen West to make Zen practice and training more available and accessible to people all over the world. Instructional videos, printable resources, and much, much more are also available on our website at www.zenwest.ca. If you're a regular listener, I'd love to hear from you. So please drop me an email at office at zenwest.ca and let me know who you are, how you got started, and what brought you to Zen. Everything we make available in person and online at Zen West is only possible because of the support of our members and associates, people like you. If the efforts of our community are making a difference in your life, I'd like to invite you to show your support and take part in making it happen by becoming an associate or member of the Zen West Sangha. You can do this by clicking the Join Us tab on our website at www.zenwest.ca. Thank you for your support, and thanks for listening. I'd like to say a little bit uh, this evening about intensive practice. As some of you probably know, uh, Matt Kelly and Reverend Soshin and I were away last week at a uh, seven-day session in Seattle uh, with the uh, Choboji Sangha and uh, led by uh, Genjo Osho, whom many of you have met. He comes up usually uh, twice a year here to Zen West. We have a close relationship with uh, Genjo Osho and with his Sangha. <clears throat> we got back on Friday and then Sunday was the Zen West monthly. No. After returning on the Friday, the Sunday was the monthly Zen West uh, one-day intensive, so yet more intensive practice, just returning from Sashin. I was struck this time that really Sashin is and intensive practice generally is strong medicine. I think this is a good way of looking at it. It works for me. We all have some experience of illness, maybe major illness, direct experience, family, friends, who contract cancer, heart disease, something like this. Serious, serious physical illness, condition, life-threatening perhaps. And the appropriate response is strong medicine, maybe surgery, maybe chemotherapy, radiation, so on intrusive, powerful, uh, difficult to manage, uh, life upending perhaps, medicine, strong medicine. And I see intensive practice in exactly this same way. The condition that calls for it is life itself. Life is a terminal condition, and it's beset by all manner of challenges, of difficulties. Traditionally, in Buddhism, we think of uh, sickness, old age, and death, as being uh, representative 
of the challenges that we face in life. And to the extent that we're aware of the gravity of these challenges, I think, or perhaps we have our nose rubbed in them by direct experiences of our own mortality, our own uh, vulnerabilities or loved ones around us, to that extent, we are given a bit of a wake-up call. We can't perhaps any longer just cruise through our lives as though they'll last forever. We have to face the fact of transience, of impermanence, no predictability. It's often a crisis of one sort or another, whether it's a health crisis, a relationship crisis, a work crisis, some uh, life upheaval that brings us to practice initially. And I think perhaps the bigger the crisis, maybe the more we get that there's something to be done about it. And we might have to enter into the realm of being uncomfortable, of uh, of going through fire to get where we want to go. Of course, seated meditation, zazen, this is the fundamental, the core practice that we practice here. Every Tuesday we come here. If we practice once a week on these Tuesdays, we get the benefits that accrue from that level of practice. If we can manage to establish a daily home practice routine, not an easy thing to do, but a significant step. If we can do that, we will notice uh, an acceleration, perhaps, a quickening of the effects. They'll start to become more prevalent in our life. We'll notice the changes more quickly. Or if we don't, perhaps other people will and will be kind enough to point it out to us. Intensive practice, uh, you can think of it as uh, an extension along this continuum, but there's rather more going on to it than it, going on with it than that in my experience. When we sit, if we sit for, as on Tuesday nights, we have three rounds, or if we sit at home, say we sit for 20 minutes perhaps, you may notice, I certainly I notice it regularly, that the last few minutes of the sit have a completely different quality than the first few minutes. We sit down when we start, the mind is busy, lots of thoughts and so on. And over the course of, say, the 20 minute sit or the one hour, three rounds here, we settle down. By the end, one of two things typically for me anyway happens. Either I have settled down and there's a, a, a shift, a, a, a deepening, a, a connectedness, a, an availability, an openness that I've developed that wasn't present when I sat down initially. Or on the other hand, if I'm agitated and restless and antsy and just can't sit still and I'm just waiting for the timer to go so I can jump up and do those very important things in my life, I notice that towards the end it just gets harder and harder to sit still and I just want to bolt. I want to get out of here. These two are not so different. I've learned that when I experience the latter, 
it's because the the part of myself that is resistant to this practice has taken the four. It is typically because it has become threatened by the activity of practice itself. And if I don't give in to it, if I go through it, I can settle down into a spaciousness that lies just beyond it. And that's accessible particularly at the end of this sit. In any event, the point here is the more we practice in a given uh, time or in a given session, uh, the more potential opens up, particularly at the end of that sit. So when we do intensive practice where we sit Say with our monthly intensives, we sit all day, six in the morning till five at night. There were nine of us on Sunday engaging in this practice. The last sit, ah, well, my experience is it is very special indeed. At Sashin, for seven days, we get up early, the schedule at Shoboji, sitting in the Zendo at five in the morning, formal schedule ends around 10 at night, lots of sitting, walking, chanting, listening to talks, three opportunities for private interviews with the teacher during the day, work practice, all focused at the same the same direction going beyond there's nowhere to hide when you're on day 2 and you know you're going to be there for a week there's no point in just hanging on. You can't, well, maybe you can, just kind of tough it out. But there's so much incentive and encouragement instead of resisting and holding tight and just getting through, there's so much support in just letting go. This moment is all there is and there's no point fighting it. What's called for is surrendering that part of us that wants to keep control, that wants to run the show, that part we call the uh, egoistic part of ourselves. It gets worn down a week of relentless, constant engagement. There's nowhere to hide. We're rubbed raw, you could say, physical discomfort, sore knees and back and body, and it just goes on and on. There's no way out except letting go into it. This is strong medicine. Things come up that we don't want to come up. Difficult patterns, memories, shame, abuse, whatever it is that we're holding on to that's preventing us from just coming in to this moment as it is, it'll all come up.
Well, it's strong medicine and no fooling and not to be entered into lightly. We don't engage typically in strong medicine in our everyday lives unless we're in a condition that calls for it. It's not healthy to take medication that is not prescribed. So when we encounter a life situation for which we have reason to uh, be drawn to a strong practice. And these situations are all around us. It's just a question of waking up to them, seeing for ourselves, yes, perhaps now is the time to go a little deeper, or perhaps it isn't. Perhaps my life circumstances are such that this is not the time. We're each in control of our lives, in control of our practices at that level. The trick, I think, is to listen to the right voice there will always be the voice saying, oh, this isn't the time, and oh, maybe I'll do that later, and oh, I've done enough, thank you, and oh, I don't really need that so very much. That voice will always be there, I expect. It certainly is for me. It's notorious before session practice to get the jitters, to be a little anxious what's going to happen, just like it is before a medical procedure. And with the medical procedure, we know this is the way to go. And with intense, intensive practice, the same thing. When the time is right, we just do it. This is the core. Zazen is the core practice. Intensive practice is the... For me, it's the principal way of organizing Zazen. The traditional, powerful way to take a week of time and just go at it hammer and tongs. When I first encountered... Eshu Osho, uh, when I reconnected with Victoria Zen Center, oh, a decade or more ago, I quickly saw that his interest was in building up this Zen Center, not for reasons of grandiosity, but because a a large, stable, well-organized, well-run Zen center was one that could offer regular intensive practice to its members. That was the motivation that I saw that he was holding out, and I was happy to jump on board. This too, for me, is exactly the point of having a Zen center, is to be able to offer this pivotal experience for those who want to engage in it. And so in 2004, I think it was, we had our first session at Victoria Zen Center. Seven of us. Three, I think. In this room, Eshu, Kokai, and myself, and then every year, every year since. So we just keep at it. That's my take on uh, <laughs> intensive practice, session practice. I'm all over it, as you can tell, and. 
I just invite everyone to do what they need to do at whatever level it is to engage with this or other practices and to do whatever you do wholeheartedly. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the Living Zen Podcast. If you follow Living Zen through iTunes, I would very much appreciate it if you would take a moment to let me know what you think about it by rating or reviewing the podcast so that new listeners can also hear what you have to say. Thank you for your time and for your support.